What is going on guys? My name is The Freeman. Today we're going to be looking at PS2 emulation. It's no secret that some of the games that are out there are harder to run than other games, such as Killzone and God of War. But those games are extremely hard to run on an emulator. So today we're going to be taking a look at seeing if we can't get it running, one, as accurate as we can, two, as fast as we can. So I have kind of messed around with the settings a little bit and seeing if I can't get it a little bit faster and whatnot. And we're going to be taking a look at the settings that I have found to be, well, quite frankly, the most accurate and the fastest settings possible. And I'll be showing you how to get to those settings, how to put those settings in, and some of the different settings and what they are and whatnot. I won't be going too much into the different settings as I'm not an expert on this. Uh, if you want to learn about PS1 emulation, that'll be one of my next videos and if you want to take a look at god of war that'll also be my next video so you might want to subscribe to you can catch up on that now the way i did it was i have the kill zone disc but i burned it to an iso so i didn't have to keep swapping discs out and in on top of the fact that the emulator wasn't working well with my disc drive so it won't actually read the disc off of my disc drive but enough talk Let's go ahead and get right into the kill zone emulation settings. So I, I actually used a specific part of the first part of the game to kind of benchmark it. So you go ahead, you fight these guys in that first bunker, uh, you kill them all. That's not really that much of a performance hit. If you're getting low FPS there. Uh, you might as well just stop right then and try and switch settings so you can get 100%. Now, if you are getting 100%, the next major stress test is when you're running through this like little battlefield and you have to go in between like this maze of wire and stuff like that uh the frame rate dips quite a bit on most settings so i use that as my benchmark for different settings so let's get into it so you finally opened up pcsx2 the ps2 emulator so the first thing you want to do is take a look at the program log now it should be enabled by default if it's for some reason not enabled you want to go to miscellaneous show console and that'll show you your pretty much information features detected things of that nature now what i want you to do is take a look at the x86 features detected and take a note of what's all there it should go from SSE2 all the way through whatever your system supports. SSSE3 is probably the most supported because it's been around for fucking forever. But if you have a newer CPU, you're probably going to see something like AVX, AVX2, SSE 4.2, things of that nature, 4.1. You're going to want to choose the highest one that you have. It'll go from at, uh, lowest to highest. So whichever one is the last one, except for FMA, I don't, you don't have that. Don't worry about that. Don't even think about that. Just think it's Full Metal Alchemist, all right? So after you figure out everything of that nature, you're going to want to go to Configuration. And we'll just go straight to emulation settings. Now in the left hand, there should be a little box. It says EE slash IOP. And it's got like a little chip. If you got go all the way down in that box, you'll eventually come to speed hacks. You want to click on speed hacks. And if it's not enabled by default, I want you to enable it. Then I want you to go to EE cycle rate. That you're going to go ahead and uh, leave at zero for right now. But if you find that it's just too slow right at the beginning, you're going to bring it down to negative two. That way it speeds it up a little bit because it goes at like my CPU does it at like 10% speed. So it, it takes a long time to boot up. Otherwise, you're going to leave it at zero. Then you're going to go down to the right hand corner ish and it'll say micro VU hacks. You're going to click on MTVU hacks multi-threaded micro vu1 click that and you're all good to go it's mainly for quad cores which for the most part everyone out there should have you're going to click apply you're going to press okay you're going to go back to configuration and this is where your x86 features detected is going to come in handy bios or plugin slash a bios selector is what you're going to select next you're going to go to gs because there should be a gs pad and then like a, a drop down window right there you're going to click on the drop down window and you're going to select whichever one is the fastest for me it's avx2 so you're going to press that and you're going to click apply and press ok and you go to configuration again you're going to go down to video go to 
plugin setting. And then from here, you're gonna choose the render and the renderer is gonna be software mode and it's gonna be Direct 3D 11. Unless you're on an older system, it's gonna be DirectX 3D 11. You might have to choose the 3D9 if it's a uh, younger or older system. So like that, it'll be say software. Hardware mode settings will gray out. You're not gonna have anything for that. And then you're gonna go down to software mode setting. Now here is where you can set the edge anti-aliasing render threads and mip mapping. Mip mapping should be enabled by default and render thread should be two. You're gonna bump that up to however many cores you have. So six threads is where you're gonna set it at. Now you can go to shader configuration and click configure. And normally it's gonna be enabled by default, but enable FXAA. This is just to make the game just look a, a little bit better instead of so many jagged edges. Same with the edge anti-aliasing. You do not wanna enable or disable mip mapping as it might cause bugs within the software. And then you're gonna press okay. Then you should be set up for running Killzone. As much as I'd love to run Killzone in hardware mode, there's a white bars that plague the system, which honestly, I wanna figure out how to get rid of because there's it, it's hard to play when there's fucking jail bars right in front of your face. So for now, the software mode actually runs it fairly well. Uh, I'll be trying to get all the games to run fairly well. I think the next one is God of War. And then after that, I think uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is the next one because I couldn't run that right away on hardware mode. So we will see. Thank you. Uh, like it if you liked it. Grive if you want to see more videos like this and leave a comment. Trust me, you will want to leave a comment for seeing which other games you really want me to see if you can run. Or maybe you're just like, hey, I just want to see this run on this or whatever. Just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thank you.